Human remains found entombed under an old Auckland villa have finally been identified, but the mystery of what happened and how they got there still lingers. Police were called to a suburban street in Mount Eden back in January when contractors renovating an old boarding house uncovered bones under the property. Today, police say they've finally identified the remains as those of David Stanley Hart, listed as one of the property's former owners. Katie Doyle reports. It's a sunny, crisp day in Mount Eden, hardly a cloud in the sky. Walking along Marlborough Street, you wouldn't know that earlier this year, human remains were found encased in concrete beneath an old villa by contractors. Those remains, according to police, after months of forensic detective work, were today named as those of David Stanley Hart, a former owner who allowed the home to be used as a boarding house. Next door, one neighbour Malcolm sits on his deck, mulling over what's happened. I guess the concrete, buried in concrete, was a bit of a giveaway about suspicious, so the police haven't surprised anyone there. The obvious, I guess, David Stanley Hart, uh, that was probably the obvious call, and I guess it just puts the neighbourhood at rest a little bit. There's, it's no more complicated than we'd all suspected. Very sad for David and uh, I would be surprised if they get to the bottom of it, but who knows. Mr Hart also owned property at Blackball near Greymouth. An old neighbour there, Neville Sheehan, says Mr Hart was a sometime gold miner and a bit eccentric. He says Mr Hart was a little secretive and used to stay at the Blackball house with his brother. Mr Sheehan and Mr Hart used to chat when he came to town. David's a good, he was a good man. He always liked to stop and have a bit of a chat. I talked to him quite a bit and then I looked after his place and put some sheep in it on to keep the grass down when he was away. The house in Marlborough Street in Mount Eden is now owned by Peter Marsden, who was renovating the rundown hulk when the bones were found. He says they'd been a tad suspicious about the lump of concrete, but hadn't thought much of it until the discovery. Pretty horrific. I hadn't seen human bones before. So yeah, so my builder, the builders, uh, they phoned me up and said that they'd found uh, some human remains that was underneath this sort of big pile of concrete. Mr Marsden says the police told him a while ago they knew who the bones belonged to. But after that, he says everything went quiet and he was left to guess who might have been entombed under his house. We had the house police by the police. Um, the house has been, like, redone. It doesn't have, like, doesn't feel like the old house, if you will. I haven't stayed a night there yet, like I'm hoping to have it finished soon and then live there. It wasn't until today that Mr Marsden learned the bones were Mr Hart's. I'm just a little bit gutted we didn't um, find out what happened, um, but happy that we have confirmed that it's him. I mean, it was, uh, I mean, you know, it, it would seem 99% sure that it was that it was him, um, but that was without getting the confirmation. But yeah, no, it was good to, good to hear that it was him, but... Um, it doesn't seem like we're any closer to, to why. Acting Detective Senior Sergeant Mark Franish says the process of identification has been long and exhaustive. And the cause of death and how Mr Hart ended up entombed under his own house, still unclear. He says the family have been notified and police are now appealing for help from anyone who interacted with Mr Hart as far back as March 2004. They want to speak with anyone who interacted with tenants at the house until 2016, when it stopped being used as a boarding house. For Checkpoint in Auckland, Katie Doyle.